Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am joined by somebody that has influenced my life in more ways than I can tell you, a good friend of mine, Dallas Taylor. How you doing, Dallas? Good. Thanks for having me on the, uh, the podcast. This is it's oh. good to finally uh, be on. We, we've actually been able to have some communication now for a while before we've actually gotten to do this, and I've now consider you a friend. We've been able to hang out a little bit. And uh, For those of you that don't know, uh, Dallas is the lead vocalist of Maylene and the Sons of Disaster and formerly the lead vocalist for Under Oath. Um, but beyond music, he's also an actor. You may have seen him in parts in Joe Dirt 2, The Beautiful Loser, and The Possession Experiment, as well as the upcoming Virginia Bitches. So I am so excited for all these things. Let's take it a little bit at a time now, though. Under Oath. You know, how was it getting started with Under Oath? uh it was i was so young uh it's funny because uh i'm in the house where under Oath started out of uh it's the house i grew up in so like uh i think we we're like 17 years old and like uh i had a friend and we were just messing around i think we had another band before that which was really bad and then uh yeah kind of over time it just formed and uh we started uh, playing shows but uh it wasn't easy at first uh, we uh people didn't uh, get us i guess especially in the florida uh heavy scene uh yeah we were we had to work uh for uh, any uh, respect or uh or uh yeah it was a uh, not 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 a not a walk in the park well especially when you're in that hard scene back then it wasn't as acceptable back then to be in a hard metal scene and still wear your faith on your sleeve like that was something that wasn't as acceptable oh, yeah. back then you know back then it was just drugs drinking you know we're partying it wasn't you know it wasn't cool to be able to show your love for jesus christ on your sleeve and you guys still did that and you yeah opened that up was like oh well because of you guys a whole opposite, like, music started man especially in saint pete uh i remember like playing shows and like nazis would come to like fight the, sh uh, the sharps and like uh we played one time guava wing which is in tampa it's a huge like uh at halloween a huge festival i remember someone running up and punching me uh like so, so like yeah we we did not have it easy like we were at first yeah people were like you guys are not allowed to basically be in our scene and have your kind of beliefs and and you know at first i think we were a little uh too um overexcited about our faith so i could see where it could have been annoying because you know when you're young then i was like you know i, I thought well this thing's you know i feel like god's changed my heart so i want to tell everyone else how awesome he is or how awesome god is and so I'm going to kind of ram it down your throat, not ram it, but you know, like I'm going to talk from it from stage a lot. And then you realize later on people come to a, a concert to hear or a show to hear music, not get a, a Bible lesson or, you know, or, or a, a long spoken word. So we learned that pretty quick. Uh, and, uh, and that I would, I always went back later on and I was like, you know, if there's one thing I could have changed, I probably would have, kept the uh talking to a minimum and more of just showing who i am by my actions and love and you know like because we used to talk for good bits when we first started we were uh i was raised southern baptist on a dirt road and so uh, my dad was a music leader and uh, the church is right next door to uh, the house that i grew up in so i was raised pretty uh country southern baptist so i thought the uh when i was that young i thought that's i was doing the uh <laughs> the talking was, doing was the definitely best. what you wanted to be doing i thought so yeah and i realized <laughs> later on I'm like ah oh, gosh i probably ended up throwing so many people away by talking too much but well and i will say alone in december is still one of my favorite tunes to this day like awesome actually I, that's i it's weird really because that uh, a lot of that music, you know, when you get older, I hear it. I'm like, oh, it's not cringe, not cringy, but it's just like, oh, I was so young then. But uh, yeah, that song, I actually, uh, I like, especially lyrically, you know, uh, I was going through a rough time. And so, yeah, I, uh, I tried to put it through in, in my lyrics for that. And I think it came across pretty well with that song. Yeah, that's awesome that you mentioned that. 
Oh, dude, I, I adore that tune. To this day, I adore that tune. But um, let's talk about Maylene. Um, what what uh, helped your transition over to Maylene and the Sons of Disaster? So when Maylene started, it was kind of like I, I moved from Florida to Alabama, and I didn't think I'd play music again after I grew up. And then I started just, you know, with some guys that I knew. And, like, uh, and so we just kind of were like, let's embrace what we grew up on like you know um old country you know classic rock southern rock and like uh and i was raised yeah on um, like i and i i hated it when i was in younger and in an under oath of like old country i i guess that was just the ornery side of me like wanting to be everything that i was my, my dad and stuff what i that was me rebellion and then when i got older i'm like this music or not even that much older but i started realizing this is awesome i i took that for granted i wish i would have uh so when maylene started everybody was just like yeah that's what you should have been doing all along like that fits your personality of yeah. uh, you know me riding a dirt bike on a dirt road uh you know it's funny because people have told stories i forget someone but they're like yeah the first time i met him he's on his dirt bike you know peeling out like one of the band guys uh so yeah uh so it, it, music it is like, something yeah. that's been very important to you for your whole life obviously but you've been dipping your toes into the world of acting as of late as well so what what caused you to actually make that transition to say you know what I want to try to see myself on the screen. I want to put myself out there. What what caused that transition for you? Um, at first, it was people that were like contacting us, like uh, wanting us to like uh, do a cameo in a film, uh, and, a, and a few of them. And so um, I did that, and then I was like, you know, it felt very familiar with with. Uh, you know playing live because I always like the, the entertaining side so I was like you know I want to give this a go I, I I enjoyed it a lot and like I like uh the things that like that fear that you get that most people want to run from I I go towards it because that's what makes great things happen even if you get told you know no a, a bunch of times I still like chasing that so when I first uh, got into acting, you know, like I didn't, you know, first to start out with a couple of cameos, but when I started uh, at our, you know, in a couple of films, but uh, when I really started going for it, I didn't, no one, I never mentioned I played music. I basically was just, and uh, it's funny as one of my booking agents, uh, like six months into booking me, he's like, dude, I didn't know that that was you. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, funny you know it's like because i never mentioned it uh or i'd show up on a set usually and there'd be like a gaffer or somebody and they'd be like dude what are you doing and i'm like i'm acting and this is really what i did not know that so uh yeah i like i i've always liked trying to work uh, um earn respect mm -hmm. or earn any kind of work you know hard work and see it pay off and not be given like freebies you know it's like after under oath i didn't start a band that sounded like exactly like under oath and kind of like went on that you know and kind of like with acting i didn't mention i was a uh played music at all at first i mean at, at first it was a couple cameras but those movies never even came out i don't think so when i started it's like i just want to see if i can you know uh i'm that kind of i guess hard-headed where i'll see something i'm like i'm gonna do this you know uh or at least try the the best part about being told no is when you finally get tell, told yes you know that you worked your ass off and you really earned it you know if you're just told yes, yes all the time what's going on here but to be told no and to run through that brick wall and keep running and know that you finally got that yes your heart your mind and your talent were all in the right spot so to see this happening for you i, I couldn't be more proud of you man this is so awesome oh thank you yeah, that you're exactly uh, right. Uh, that's what makes it, you know, pay off is those when you get those yeses, you're like, this is every, you know, this is everything that I worked for, and it's just uh, not giving up, you know, uh, on your on your dreams. And it's it's especially with acting when you do so many auditions, and that's just normal for every 
actor until they've kind of made it like you're told no 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 and like you start thinking like i'm a piece of you know i'm gonna i i suck you know and then like you kind of have to just break that and be like i'm not gonna stop and uh and uh yeah i like that uh that, i guess uh well, well, like you said when you earn it, you know when you go out and you work hard and you earn it it means that much more to you than having something handed to you. So I, I, yeah. I completely agree. You know, like I still, this is episode number 288. And every time I get to meet someone like you and talk to someone like you, that's meant a lot to me. It, you know, I, I can't, I can't explain to people what this means to me. You know, somebody that influenced my life growing up and now I get to talk to on an everyday basis and learn things, you know, talk faith and talk things, you know, as friends, like this really means a lot to yeah. me, but you know, you, you are going to be part of Virginia Bitches coming up, which is a horror movie. I don't want to get too much into that because that's still out there. We haven't really talked much about it. But in order to be in horror, horror has to start for you somewhere, Dallas. So now I want to go back to the past, talk about how horror started for you. The first horror movie that you watched and Dallas, your first horror movie was Halloween. Um, I don't, you know, after because of my brain injury, a lot of uh, my memories off but uh yeah i remember um seeing uh i think it's maybe she's walking on the road and like you could just see him in the background or something and that scared the shit out of me i mean it's like that scared and i've i've went and you know uh listened to document or you know them talking about the film and they're like you know it never really shows a lot of crazy like violence and gore it's just always like it just is that kind of that, that creepy you know and later on it it did it did more progress but in that first film it's not a lot of blood and uh it's just more of a mental to me it was like when you see every time i saw michael in the background it was like yeah that uh john yeah john carpenter he did a when a director can make you feel something, they've done their job, and uh, he did an awesome job with with that and with that that uh, song. Gosh, yeah, you hear it; it's like still uh, gives me kind of chills. Uh, well, I mean, the thing about the Halloween theme is, even if you've never seen Halloween, people know that theme song. That's how important that song is to people. Yeah, and you're right. Like for a lot of the time, Michael is just the shape. That's all he is. He's the shape in the background. You know, when Lori thinks wasn't she's that his he's... name too? Yeah, the shape. That... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's the perfect name for him. Um, yeah. Do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen that, Dallas? I think around 10 or 12, probably. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. I had older brothers and sisters, uh, a lot older than me. I'm like the baby, uh, the accident. I guess uh, my brother's. 10 years older than me and my sister's eight. I think it's around there. So, uh, yeah, they all uh, kind of like uh, saw a lot of and heard a lot of bands and stuff that I will probably, my parents would be like, no way, you know, like, and so. Right. Uh, also, you know, seeing The Shining, Jacob's Ladder, uh, Children of the Corn, parts of, you know, like it was like as a young kid, you know, all that was like, and out living out here in the country, I never would have had that except. I had my older brothers and sisters. Maybe they were trying to mess with me or scare with me, or. Uh, but yeah, that's probably why I'm so messed up <laughs> now with my, uh, with my. You were their uh, guinea pig, man. Imagination, yeah. <laughs> so another thing about this movie is, like you were talking about, like you when you see the shape behind Lori all the time, you know how effective that can be. What was that the thing that affected you the most about the film, or was there a certain scene that affected you the most? Um, that that got me, um, affected me, but I think there's a scene too where she's running, uh, to the house and he is chasing her, and that, like, just like you know, you know, I don't get it all, like, but as a, her fighting to get to the because I would always have dreams of stuff like that, of like trying to get, you know, I would have nightmares like that. And so that affected me. And then also the, uh, when she's in the closet and uh, he starts 
breaking through. I mean, that, uh, yeah, that got to, uh, that was a hit, hit home with me a lot. Oh, for sure. And the thing about Halloween is it's really transcendent. I mean, people still talk about it to this day. I mean, they're still making Halloween films to this day from 1978. I mean, that's how important this film is in the history of the world and in the history of cinema. Now, as I said, they did do the Rob Zombie Halloweens. One question I've been asking people is, would you like to see your first horror movie remade today? Rob Zombie did do a Halloween remake. Did you see it? And were you a fan of it? I did, and I think I'm pretty sure, uh, yeah, I was, for sure. I don't remember um, uh, much because of my memory of my action. That's kind of why I was like a John Carr, because like, I know things, but it's like they're uh, yeah. from, from, the, from the brain injury. But I did, I do remember liking that, because I think I even had, um, I, I bought the movie, and uh, I think I had something else. Like I got like a box set. I don't know, but yeah. uh, something like him. But it was, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's still, I still love the original, but I think he did a, a good uh, job. And then I saw um, Danny McBride, and uh, I can't think of the other guy that he works with. Uh, oh, the, the new Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills? I saw the, the 2018, and that was, um, that was good, too, yeah. So, uh have you seen the newest one, Halloween Kills, yet? I think you'll dig it, man. Um, it's got some clunky dialogue. Um, but if did, you're uh, looking for just a slasher, it's, it's a great, gory slasher, man. Did Danny McBride and uh, yep. I can't think of his partner. They always I can't think of his partner's name right now either, but it's Danny They're McBride. They're a great combo, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they, they did that one too, and then they got Halloween Ends coming out this year. Um, oh, okay. And I think you'll dig them, man. So... Halloween, obviously, Dallas means a lot to you being your first horror movie. But now, for a second, Dallas, I want to go scream on you here. My little buddy Ghostface has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Dallas? What is your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, gosh. Um, the Shining, I think, is... is uh, oh, I've seen that the most, and that just the... Uh, to me how stressful and how you know real it could uh it feels you know it's like a guy losing his mind having fever and so uh yeah that movie i uh probably would say it would be my favorite uh scary movie there's so many of them but yeah i would probably say that halloween oh. 4 i like a lot uh and i i definitely decorate you know to, to the occasion. I'm wearing my Halloween shirt. I got Michael Myers back here hanging out, but I always have room 217. This is That's always awesome. right here. That's how much this movie means to me. I've got the shining up here. I've got Jason. I've got Freddie. This stuff stays here because that's how much that means to me. So no matter what I'm doing, that's always there. So um, and I've seen the documentaries on like what all like what it meant or, you know, was he about Native Americans and yep. the part have to do with the moon landing. And like, so, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot to that film that like uh, I've chased uh, different, you know, you know, the documentaries about their stuff. So I, I like Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, he's a uh, gosh, he's his, a genius. His brain was, yeah, it was amazing. He got he got it really across with it. what a director pushing people to you feel feel it and uh yeah well i mean dallas before i let you go everybody i did i do want to say this now i do have dallas's social media links down here in the description so make sure you're giving him a follow he's a great guy and i've been so honored to do this like this is a top you know 10 moment of my life right now because of uh, what uh, meant to me growing up under oath you know I was always that punk rock emo kid. And then Finch, Thursday, and Under Oath are the three bands that showed me that metal can still be, it can still be real to that I didn't really like a lot of the metal because where I'm from, I didn't know it. I couldn't find good metal. Yeah. To me, it was just that mall metal, that radio metal. But then Finch, Thursday, and Under Oath are the bands that completely changed my life. So to be doing this with you right now is incredible. Now, before I let you go, Dallas, I do want to go back to Halloween for one second. What we're going to do is rank this on a skull count. So what we're doing, we're not ranking it on 
creativity or acting, nothing like that. We're not being critics. What we're going to do now, Dallas, is rank Halloween on how it affected you. So zero skulls being not effective, five being very effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. What would your ranking of Halloween 1978 be? I'm from zero to five. Yep. Uh, I'd say I got three and a half probably. Uh, yeah. Perfect ranking. Because at the time I was, I was a little bit, yeah, too young to understand. And, and, uh, and then the older I get, yeah. So I'd say about three, three and a half. And that's a perfect ranking. So uh, like I said, guys, make sure you're following Dallas on social media. Uh, this man means a lot to me, not only because of what he's done in the past, but because of what he's doing right now and the man he is and the conversations we've had, he means the world to me. So please make sure you're giving him a follow. Dallas, don't go anywhere. i got a couple more questions for you. Everybody and else, I have as a, always. A, I have a funny thing to tell you in a second, too. Uh, So when Under Oath first started, I was so into horror. When I was in high school, we made a horror movie. My mom was a part of it with a VHS. Burnt down like a, a fake building we built in the back. But our first band pictures was me laying in my pole with blood. Like I shot my head and like in, in, the, in there. Then the, the other pictures that the band was, our guitar player, Corey, was... Uh, standing in a black cloak with a dagger there's a ring of fire around him i'm hanging from a tree upside down by a rope and then aaron and octavio were in the trees holding lanterns and we did these yeah. photos and and this is like yeah we're like you know this is you're gonna tell people about god or whatever and like i remember uh i forget who it was i think it was like a youth pastor guy i knew or something here and they were like that maybe is a little too extreme. I think you're uh, going to probably turn people uh, the other way. And so we didn't use them. But, yeah, the very first photos we ever took were these crazy horror-themed uh, uh, photos. So, yeah, it's funny. It's amazing how horror has influenced the both of us. Like, it's just – it's amazing how these things happen, man. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, give me one second, Dallas. I, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Everybody else, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.